Oh boy. Oh man, every single time I think I'm not gonna make another Starfield video, something interesting happens and I make another Starfield video. So I was trolling around the Starfield subreddit because I was looking to see if there were gonna be any updates or if there was just in general anything new going on with the game today. And I came across this really, really good post from uh, Flashy Background 820, uh, where basically, as it says, Starfield was a very different game than what was released and changed fairly deep into the development process. I am going to hit on two major things in this post that he basically talks about, uh, where he talks about the fuel economy in the game, and then he also talks about outposts, and then he makes a conversation about uh, environmental hazards. So for the first part is the fuel economy. So from his post, so let's envision how the game would have played out if we consumed fuel with jumps. Sidebar, we do not consume fuel when we play Starfield and we fly with our ships. Our ships do not consume fuel. You can make as many jumps as you want without ever having to stop, dock, and refuel your ship. However, what is interesting is that there are mods for your ship when you're building your own ship that has you take into account the, the, the size of the fuel reserves you can have on your ship and also the quality of your grav drive allowing you to jump to further distances where both of these things are never really taken into account. Even with the shittiest grav drive, you can make a major jump from one location to another and for the times that you can't make that jump, it's basically because the route that you're attempting to go, you have never been on before. So you have to figure out that route, go to that star system you've never touched foot in before, before you're able to go to the destination that you want to. But continuing the post, there was a very important change to Fuel and Starfield that split the version of the game that was released from the alternate universe Starfield it started as. Todd Howard stated that in early iterations of the game, fuel was consumed when you jump to a system. Like I said, it doesn't. Uh, this was changed and we no longer spend fuel, but fuel still exists in the game as a vesicle system, which is true. When you go to look at the way in which uh, your ship is being built, there's something off on the side that lets you know what your fuel economy is. Technically, you your overall fuel capacity determines how far you can jump from your current system, but because you don't spend fuel, one jump can just be two if needed, rendering it pointless. They may as well not have the fuel in the game at all, which is true. There's no sense in having it in the game because, like I said, you don't actually consume fuel when you fly, move, or make your ship jump from one star system to another. But it used to matter, and even though it doesn't now, it's still in the game. Remembering the vesicle aspect of this because that will be important. Uh, now, what he goes on to talk about in regards to the fuel economy is how two things basically were supposed to work in tandem. Fuel... And from at the end of it, he says, how else can we get human three aside from vendors outposts? So when you're on the left side of the map, you've got, um, I always, I always call it Pacifica for whatever reason, because I'm playing cyberpunk and I remember this Pacifica, but I think it's like new Atlantis or something along those lines or new Pacific. Uh, you have neon, you have a bunch of, you have Wolf's Den, you have a bunch of vendor cities all located around each other. So running out of fuel when you're on the left side of the map is never really an issue because you're always one jump away. If the fuel system worked, you'd always be one jump away from basically going back to a capital city, purchasing fuel, and then heading back out uh, to basically explore the, the stars. Now, what happens when you are not on the left side of the map and you're on the right side of the map? Because the right side of the map has multiple different locations. Uh, d d dozens upon dozens of them on the right side of the map that go all the way up to level 100 that are super far that if you've never explored it to get all the way to the end would probably take you five, six, seven, eight, nine jumps to get to every single destination to see what every single star system essentially has. The way in which you rem the system, like this guy essentially says in here, is outposts. Outposts of Starfield have been described as pointless, which they are, they basically only exist as credit or uh, XP farms, but outside of the credit and XP farms, there really isn't a point in making an outpost. You can play through the entire game, go to every single star system without making one outpost where you can basically buy everything you need from a vendor back in one of the capital cities, just go to a research station, 
build it at that resource station and keep it moving from there. There's never really a point in creating an outpost to farm uh, specific resources. That comes into play the way she points out here, their, their vesicle, which is basically, it's a system that should have been removed from the game, but they didn't remove it from the game. They left it in there, even though it's supposed to tie into something else. In the original Starfield, players would have had to create outposts in order to explore further into the star map because they would need to extract helium. This means that players would also need resources to build these outposts, which would mean spending a lot of time on one planet, killing animals for resources, looting structure, POIs, mining, praising the God Emperor when you came across that proc gen settler vendor. Oh, glorious. In this uh, version of Starfield, these POIs become much more important and players become much more attached to specific planets as they slowly push further to more distant systems, building their outposts along the way. Now we can just fly all around, picking and choosing planets and coming and going as we please. None of that really matters, but they used to. And that is true because the idea of exploration is when you go into the unknown, you need safe harbor. <sighs> Can't believe I referenced Mass Effect and Drama there. And in order to have safe harbor, you have to build safe harbor yourself. You have to land on these planets. You have to build up an outpost. You have to create security to protect it from both the wildlife and any type of badness that may be operating in the area. You have to focus on certain type of resources you need to get. Mostly helium-3 would have been the precious resource that you needed to mine, but then also things like copper and iron and tungsten and titanium and all those other stuff came in handy in building items that you would need to continue building up your outpost. But because you don't need helium-3 to basically power your ship to go further and further into the star system to explore, there really isn't any point in the outpost except for, like I said, XP farming and credit farming. And that's essentially it. Those two systems were supposed to play off of each other and feed into each other. The further you wanted to explore, the more you would have to upgrade your ship, the more helium-3 you would have needed. Uh, you would have needed the outpost to provide you with all these resources so that you can go further. And then once you get to an even, once you reach the maximum point away from your outpost that you can travel, you'd build your next outpost and then that outpost would cover a wider margin. Then you move on to the end location. You build another outpost there. Um, that's basically Elite Dangerous. That's also basically Star Citizen. That's also basically No Man's Sky. Um, I feel as though they took those two systems out of the game because <laughs> I don't want to say that they thought that we were stupid, but I definitely feel as though Bethesda was like, this is going to bog it down. This is going to slow them down. Um, it's going to slow down exploration. I kind of feel as though it actually made, um, exploration more important. Like he says in this article about um, being really attached to planets. Um, like I said in my other uh, video where I was talking about the fact that you should be able to, especially if it's a planet that you're the only one on, you have an outpost on, you should be able to basically claim that planet and make that planet your own. And that planet would become like a hub for uh, the ships in your fleet and then the members of your crew if they're doing something for you, like an escort mission or fetch quest for you to bring stuff back. But those systems were never put in because, like he's basically figured out, the helium system was removed because it was a crutch. And they, I guess they kind of felt as though they didn't feel like having to push people towards this. I feel as though they should have because then it would have made it more impactful to build an outpost. And then they got rid of the outpost system because the galp system can it sometimes be a little bit convoluted in regards to uh, farming all these different resources, having the right amount of equipment for, I don't give a damn because I'm max level. I just build one nu two nuclear reactors and I call it a day. Uh, so I can understand why they essentially took all that stuff out of the game. Uh, the last point that he's talking about is the environmental hazards. Now, if you have ever touched down on a planet, you've probably run into a situation where as soon as you step off your ship, it's like the radiation here is too high or uh, ice hazard, you'll freeze, but then nothing ever happens. That's also a part of exploration where basically you would go super far out into space. You would land on a planet, you would step out and you, or before you even got on the planet, it'd be like the radiation level is too high. You can't land on this planet. You would have to build and mod your suit 
so that you'd be able to basically move around and walk around on this planet, which is one of the reasons why I feel as though the Captain's Lockbox exists. It exists for the different suits that you would essentially have to fit all of these different situations that you would run into. A suit for if it's freezing cold, a suit for if there's high radiation, a suit for if it's like super hot. But that was also taken out of the game. Why? Because it slows down an already slow game. So did Bethesda nerf Starfield? Absolutely. Um, I'm fairly certain that somebody played the original version of this game that as this guy said, the game was much more survival oriented and maybe a slog at times. Yeah, yeah, they, they definitely nerfed it. They nerfed it because just like that, it was a slog. Imagine, and this is one of the things that I feel as though maybe if you didn't want to do that, then you could probably add a survival mode for people to basically be able to choose like, hey, I want to have to deal with the fuel economy and building outposts. I want to have to deal with a planet that's super cold, so I need specialized equipment for it, or radiation problems, or it's super hot, or it's poisonous and toxic, or something along those lines. I need a better air filtration system. The game definitely should have launched with those options, where it's like, hey, would you like a normal, streamlined experience that's not trying to kill you every five seconds? And you could be like, yes. I would like that. And then it should also have been like, hey, do you want to die every five minutes? <laughs> Are you a masochist? Give that option to people and people would have definitely been happy to more or less run around and play. If people are happy to play World of Warcraft hardcore and have their game lag and kill them and then start all over again, there is definitely a corner of players who would have 100% enjoyed a Starfield hardcore mode that was attempting to kill them like every five minutes. So I definitely agree with this, the entirety of this Reddit post. There are a ton of redundant systems in the game that um, were basically removed or left in the game, but really don't serve a purpose because someone was beta testing the game and was like, yo, like, I don't want to have to stop what I'm doing and go and farm for two hours to build a support system for my, for my, uh, for my spacesuit that allows me to filter out poison on a toxic environment. I don't want to have to build an entire outpost so I can land my ship, which is something funny. If you've ever played Starfield and you've built the big landing pad for your, uh, your outpost, Sometimes your ship doesn't even land on the landing pad. It'll land like uh, um, three miles away and you have to jog over to it. Um, those type of systems win the game. Your ship would land there. You'd probably put something up next to it so that you can refuel uh, your ship, grab the helium and toss that bad boy up there so it can get back up to 100%. Also, the transportation ships, yes, they're, inter they're, they're interplanetary, some of them, but I'm fairly certain at some point in time, there was probably an option that the there would be a radius that that thing would be able to fly to, where if your ship ran out of juice, it would take some of the helium, take off, fly straight to your ship, fill you up, and then there'd be like some like hour cooldown or something along those lines. Like I, like I said in like the initial review, the, like the game was half-baked. <laughs> uh, it sucks, it sucks. And like I said, like you're basically waiting on the mod community to come around and just fix all of the issues that the game essentially had and and give us the version of the game that we were we were expecting from the beginning. Like I said, around December, this game will be this game will be a 10 out of 10 because the mod community would have already tricked this bad boy. Like the, the, the mod community is basically if you're from the 90s, the mod community is exhibit and Mods are basically the crew that works for Pimp My Ride. We waiting, we waiting to pimp this bitch. Don't worry. When, once it gets pimped, it's going to be A1. But for right now, I'm playing Cyberpunk and Phantom Liberty drops next week. And then then it has me. Let me know what you guys think about this. Uh, if you think that, you know... Well, no, I already know some of you think that Starfield was a half measure. And then there are the Bethesda apologists who believe that, you know, their shit don't stink. Uh, comment down below, let me know, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.